Hello and welcome back to my channel. It's Megan from Megan's Red Library. Today I will be doing a tag video. It is the mid-year book freak out tag. As I'm sure you're aware, everybody is doing it right now. It is on trend, but I've uh, really wanted to get out a lot more content and share more thoughts on like things I've read this year and I hope that you like it and if you want to discuss more just let's talk about it in the comments so without further ado the first question is the best book you've read so far this year and I'm sure none of you will be surprised burn for me by Alona Andrews I have read the first three books twice now and I, I just love it. It's done so well and it's so engaging to me. Awesome, awesome urban fantasy romance uh, series. Check it out if you like any of those things. Um, which leads into the sec second question, the best sequel, which would clearly be quite hot. Um, the reason why I like picked that and like not another book is because while the first book was amazing, the second book cemented it. It it didn't suffer from second book syndrome. It like just further progressed the world and um, the characters developed more. You just, you got more immersed in it. It was amazing. So that's why I think everybody who likes urban fantasy or romance should definitely read this series. But moving on to question number three, new release you haven't read yet but want to and I would have to say Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi I will be moving by the end of this month so all of my stuff will be packed up all, <laughs> all of my books <laughs> and I have no idea when I will be able to see them again because I don't know how much I can take so a lot of my reading is going to transition to ebooks and audiobooks, which I guess that's kind of already how it's been this year, but that wasn't the plan. Um, so I'll probably read the audiobook. I'm really excited about it because I uh, listened to the snippet on Audible with the narrator. The narrator sounds amazing, so I cannot wait to see this world and get on the hype train because I'm ready for it. And question number four, most anticipated release of the year, or for the second half of the year. And that would have to be Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. I loved the first book, Strange of Dreamer. It took a while to get into it just because that first half is like really slow and so much like world building and like but it was so, so dreamy. It felt like you were just like floating through the story until like that halfway point and you're just like, bam. Um, so I loved Strange to Dreamer. Now I need Muse of Nightmares so that I can see like what happens because the ending was just like, are, are you going to fix this? Are you just, are you going to change? What, do you, what are you going to do? How, how is she going to make this work? I've not read anything else by Lainey Taylor, um, so after Muse of Nightmares, I'll probably like go back and read her first trilogy, uh, Daughter of Smoke and Bone, so I'm interested to see how those two series differentiate, but most excited for Muse of Nightmares and that UK edition, because I am so ready for it. Number five, the biggest disappointment, I actually have two for this. The first one being um, Gaslight by Danica Dark. I don't know what she was doing with that plot line. Like, the f first three quarters of the book, excellent plot. Things are being explained. History is, like, coming out of the woodworks. And, like, characters are developing and... Oh! It's good. It's so good. And then she ruins all of it with the last... And I just, I don't understand why she did what she did. It doesn't make any sense. I need the fifth book to hurry up and get here so that I can get some kind of explanation or she can fix shit and just, I, 
I don't, I don't understand. If you read it, you know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to spoil the series if you don't know what I'm talking about. Because those first three books, and that first three quarters of that book, were fucking amazing. And then, I don't know, she just went off the di off the deep end. For me. In my opinion. So. The second book, that's the most, just the second book, would be Year One by Nora Roberts. Now, I love Nora Roberts. I own a large majority of her books. A lot of them are comfort reads because there's something like, so, uh, she has like, almost formulaic writing and I know a lot of people don't like that but I like writing like that because it's like a stress relief it's almost like watching or it's like watching a sitcom for me like you know the general plot's gonna like go this way and then it's all gonna be happy in the ending she did not do that with this book and it she, I think she just did too much there was it was post-apocalyptic so you saw like what caused the apocalypse and it was like magic induced and now like magic it's like and then she has all these different uh characters and that she's following multiple points of views and then it it like kind of comes all together and you're like, okay, like, this is kind of working. It's a little, it's a little much, it's a little, like, all over the place, but alright, like, we're here. And then, one person. That's it. For the rest of the, for, like, the last third of the book. And, like, that's all you see. And, I don't like what happens. That causes that person to be the only person that we follow. I severely disagree with it. It goes against all of my romance tropes that I love but whatever it happened it, this is supposed to be a trilogy I think and I don't know what the second books it's so it's just not her writing it it feels like she has a ghostwriter honestly and it feels like somebody else is doing this and like getting practice to write because like none of this feels like her so I I was super disappointed by that but moving on the biggest surprise and the biggest surprise would have to be where is it oh kiss of deception by Mary E Pearson um I know that this is like it's kind of like a middling book like it's not hated per se but it's not really like Nobody really talks about it. Nobody seems to like ever list it on like their favorites, but I really, really liked it. Um, I normally don't like uh, love triangles, but I don't think this was a love triangle. I know it's like set up to make you think that way, but I don't, I don't genuinely think it's a love triangle. And I think that the surprise was really well done. It got me. I was in the story. And if I had, like, sat back and, like, wasn't immersed, I probably would have guessed it early on. But she drew me in and she, she she got me. She got me. It was really good. So I can't wait to read the second and third books to see what happens. And I think she's coming out with a sequel series. Um, so, like, another trilogy, but, like, a hundred or so years after the fact, I think. Um, so if I like the rest of the series, I'm definitely checking that out and seeing what I think. Um, question number seven, favorite new author and it's debut or new to you. Um, new and it's, she's new to me and it's Juliet, Juliet Marillier. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, and the book I read was Dreamer's Pool. I listened to that on audiobook when I was coming home from vacation and it kept, it kept me so engaged and it was like, it was like listening to a traditional folk fairy tale. It was like the most, like, it was heart wrenching and it was sad, but it also had like this atmosphere that just like 
drew you in, and um, it was, I listened, I think I said I listened to it by, via audiobook, so it had dual narrators because you're following two different uh, points of views. Um, oh, Cracker Jacks, I can't remember their name. Uh, my bad, but the, uh, male and female protagonists, why can't I remember their name? I'm trying, oh god, I'm horrible. Anyways, they were in prison together, and then they escaped t together, and they go to this different part of the kingdom. And they, uh, they basically, like, there's not a romance. Like, and a lot, I think a lot of people would go into it expecting them to, like, end up together. But I don't think they'll ever end up together. I could be wrong. I haven't read the next two books yet, which I really want to. But I just loved that it was, like, they, even though they even though, like, one of them didn't want to be with the other person, like, they still worked together, and it was partnership, and they, and it was, it was just so good, and it, the writing was just so atmospheric, and I just, it was so classic, that, I think that's what it was, it was just, like, it was, like, classic, beautiful fantasy, and I loved it, so I'm definitely gonna check out more of her books when I have money. <laughs> um, question number eight, newest fictional crush. And you're not surprised that would have to be Connor Rogan from the Hidden Legacy series. The Hidden Legacy series is this series. Um, it, he, Connor, Connor is also affectionately called the Dragon by Nevada, and, um, there's, there's very good reasons for that. Yeah, I'm just, I'm gonna leave it at that. Number nine would have to be the, the newest favorite character, and this, um, I haven't actually, like, finished this book, but I got, like, four hours left on the audiobook, and that would be Farmer from Mastiff by Tamora Pierce. His name's Farmer. He's not a farmer. He's a mage. I, so I tried reading Mastiff, like, years and years ago. Like, five years ago, almost. Um, I did not like the first, like, two chapters or something like that. It, and I think somebody told me that Farmer was gonna be who Becca Cooper ends up with. And I was like, no. No, 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 no. I don't want that. I want her to end up with Rosto the Piper. But now I can kind of see it and kind of like agree, I guess. I still love Rosto. I still want them together. I will ship them to the end of times. But Farmer, I actually really, really like him now. And like if he was real, like me and him would be cool. We'd be friends. So, I, I accept him. Um, number 10, book that made you cry. And I didn't cry, per se, but this book makes me, like, really sad in the first half because I just, like, I get sad and, and just furious about the, her treatment. And that would be, um, The Winter King by C.L. Wilson. And the... The king of the female protagonist, uh, Campson, her father is like an abusive, douchey asshole. I hate him. And the shit that he puts her through, like her entire life, infuriates me and makes me sad and like I just want to punch something. Um, and that was a reread for me this year and like I didn't, I didn't cry but I was definitely like So, yeah, that would have to be my answer. Number 11, book that made you happy. And that would have to actually be Tempest and Slaughter by Tamora Pierce. Because this felt like 
I was 13 again, and I was reading Tamora Pierce for the first time. It was back to her, like, traditional style of, like, fantasy, uh, third-person uh, point of view. And I loved it. I love Aram, Baby Numer. I can't wait to see, like, what happens. I know, like, a lot of people who don't know Tamora Pierce and don't know the rest of the story struggled with that book, but if you're, like, a lifelong fan like I am, it was gorgeous. It was perfect. I loved it. It made me so happy, and I just felt so much nostalgia about it, and that had mainly to do with, like, her writing and, like, getting the history on one of these major important characters that I've grown to love over the years. So moving on to um, book number 12 in favorite book to film adaptation I saw this year. And actually I want to show you the book if I can find it because I haven't read it but I watched the movie and yes here it is. So the book is called Horse Soldiers by Doug Stanton, and this is based on, um, real, or, uh, I think it was a Delta Force. A uh, small band of special forces who secretly entered Afghanistan. Yeah. Um, so the movie is called 12 Strong. It's got Chris Hemsworth as, like, the main character. And I've not read the book yet. I, I will. But the movie was so gripping because it really talked about having to come to a compromise and understand and work together with the host nation rebel forces so that they can get control of their government again. And one of the things that they had to do, American soldiers, and like, we are so modernized and high tech, like as a military, they had to go back to cavalry days and they actually had to ride in on horses and fight battles like that in with the local rebel forces. And that movie was just so engaging and so powerful because it talks up because of, I think, the message of like communication. I think that that's like communication and cultural appreciation and understanding. And I think that that is super important in our society right now. And I think that that movie did an amazing job of that. So if you like military stories, um, modern military history, I would definitely recommend that movie. I can't recommend the book because I technically haven't read it yet, but if it's anything like the movie, I am sure that it is wonderful. Um, favorite review slash video I've done this, done so far. And I think I'm going to have to say my very first read, um, video where I did a reading, eating, and drinking comparison. And I did, um, The Winter King by C.L. Wesson and I paired it with Beef Stew. Um, that wasn't like the best video. But what I liked about doing it finally was that, okay, now I know maybe like what I should do next and like what I should add. And, um, so because I'm moving, I'm probably not, I might be able to get one more in before I move, but it might be another like two or three months before I can like do videos like that again. But I really want to do those at least once a month. Um, as long as there's a book that would be able to inspire food for me. Uh, so, yeah, I would have to say that. Number 14, the most beautiful book I have bought. Okay, well, there's three books here because they're all beautiful. The very first one. I don't know if you, the glare, but it's orange and most of the background's like a dark, like evergreen. And I just love the artwork. It's like the same artist on all the covers. And this just happens to be like my favorite one yet. I love it. 
then this one because green's my favorite color and it's got sprayed edges and it's just beautiful all the way through and I think it's super pretty and then finally because I love metallics and I think this is super gorgeous number 15 what books do you need to read by the end of the year okay look you want you want to look at my shelves like all all of the books I need to read all of the books but guess what I won't have like any of these books by the end of the month which makes me sad so technically I have a goal I have about 35 books on my audible account that I have not read yet so I want to read all of those and then I have about 25 on my ebooks and I want to read the majority of those and since I'll be doing a lot of traveling late in the near future I am hoping 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 that I will be able to get all those done so now that I have completed the tag um, I won't tag anybody because I don't really know who to tag because I think everybody's done it yet except for Lauren from the Novelush. She hasn't done it but she's also moving right now so she probably won't be doing it anytime soon. Um, if I think of anybody I'll tag them in the description below. I will also link the original uh, video below and I will list the questions. So if you want to discuss some of the books that I've read um, let me know in the comments and let's get to talking. All right. Have a good day.